Welcome back. Well, as you can see from the scruffy clothes and the safety glasses, I'm not to mention the clutter on the table, today is project day. And this is what we're working on. Now, some of you may remember this piece from two weeks ago when Jocelyn and I picked this up at Community Aid and we looked at this spray painted porcelain lamp and said, project. Well, I thought initially we would be looking at paint stripper. Oh, sorry, I showed you the wrong side. Paint stripper and scrubbing. But one of the viewers over on Crazy Lamp Lady said, you know what? Oven cleaner will work. Well, I have never tried this before. At the end of this video, we could find ourselves saying, well, that's half an hour of my life I'll never get back because nothing's happened. Or we will have come up with a quick, cheap, easy, and relatively safe method of getting paint off porcelain. So, let's just... Here, this is, the label is still on this, the price tag. So we are going to pop this little bugger down, spray our oven cleaner. This is just easy off. Oh my, the smell is just. Timer. My goodness, <clears throat> I do have windows open and a fan on. Um, by the way, that is going to increase the noise factor. Sorry about that. Believe me, if it's this bad with the fan on and the windows open, it would be impossible otherwise. So we'll be right back and talk about a few other things while we're waiting for this to work. Okay, first of all, in the Japanese porcelain video, I have this beautiful teapot sitting right in front of me and I completely forgot to say anything about it. And that's unfortunate because this is an important style of Japanese pottery that we will be seeing as we go out thrifting. This is otagiri. Now, Otagiri stoneware usually has a, a matte finish. In this case, it's pebbled and a high gloss glaze. When you run your hand across this, you can actually feel the height of the glaze. It's very thick, very interesting, stylized, abstract designs. Uh, beautiful. This sort of rusty red and green, that's actually green, it may look black, but it's actually green. Color combination is very big in Otagiri, particularly in their stoneware pieces. This is another one, just a cup. Um, it's not the same, as you can see. But again, we have this rusty red and then this dark green and this is a more matte glaze. It's not pebbled like this one, but you can clearly see the similarities. Now let's talk about Otagiri uh, because it's a very interesting story and we have time to kill while this is working. The company was founded in the 1940s by a Japanese-American couple, Chioku and Goro Otagiri. They were both born in the United States, U.S. citizens. Let's not lose sight of that. 
and they were incarcerated in the Second World War, sent off to a concentration camp. Beautiful, huh? So that part of the story is very shameful. Uh, they were certainly not the only Japanese Americans who were just herded into camps based on nothing more than their ethnicity. There was no politics. They were not tried or convicted of conspiring with our Japanese enemies in the Second World War. They were merely picked up and herded off into camps. Um, one of the worst examples of this actually took place in Canada. Uh, it was uh, one of the German uh, great-grandchildren of Queen Victoria, believe it or not. It was like uh, the first cousin of the King of England herded off to a concentration camp in Canada. Beautiful, huh? Well, we didn't necessarily play nice back in those days. The Otagiris, however, with a lot more forgiveness and forbearance than I would have shown if I were them, got out of the concentration camps, and uh, Goro, the husband, actually taught for the United States military. He taught them Japanese. Um, wow. I just, uh, some people are just better human beings than others. I don't know what to say. I don't know if I could muster that level of, of kindness and forgiveness for people who had herded me into a concentration camp, but they did bless their hearts. Well, they started a porcelain company in the 1940s, and because uh, they were Japanese Americans, that they were able to do this in the time of occupied Japan. Their porcelain was made in Japan, and then it was imported to the United States. Otagiri porcelain was manufactured for about 50 years. Um, the company was founded in the 1940s after the Second World War when they were released from the concentration camp. Let's not lose sight of that. That's so shameful. And they created uh, some very beautiful, very high-end porcelain. Um, I had a piece, and it, it went to my Etsy shop. It sold very quickly. But I will show you some pictures because I keep pictures of everything that's I keep pictures of everything I have ever sold. I've got pictures of dolls I sold 40 years ago. Um, it's, it's not hoarding if you keep it in a pretty box. I'll show you some pictures of that little Otagiri piece because it shows you what they were capable of in terms of high-end porcelain. What we see more often is their stoneware pieces. Very distinctive, very nice. And in the um, 60s, 70s, 80s, a lot of their business was making those tiki mugs for restaurants. So if you find a tiki mug from that period, there's a very good chance it's Otagiri. Now, Otagiri never registered their trademark until the 1980s, but they did put stickers on the bottoms of their pieces, and some of their pieces were actually um, uh, printed, uh, you know, um, stamped right on the porcelain. And uh, the, the little piece that I sold that I will be showing you is, uh, well, let me just throw that in now. Here, picture of pretty Otagiri vase. Okay, as you can see, marked. The problem is no marking, no stickers. Because over time, these stickers fall off, wear off, get washed off. And nevertheless, it has a look, you can tell. But this is definitely something worth noting. And as I say, the story of Chioko and Goto Otagiri is an interesting one. It's depressing, but it's interesting. Here's the non-depressing part. Chioko Otagiri, wife, 
lived to be 108. I consider that incredible. I, I think it's just a testament to the spirit of this woman. I want to live to be 108. I think I'm just going to work on that. Beautiful pieces. These are available. We find, find them frequently. Um, and I'm sure if you watch the Crazy Lamp Lady videos, you, you will have seen that Joss and I are snatching these up whenever we can. They are very collectible, very well made. And as you saw from the, uh, the fine porcelain piece, some of them are really beautiful. A lot of the Otagiri fine porcelain was really high-end porcelain. This was not cheap stuff sold through Woolworths. This was the kind of stuff that, you know, was Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue, um, really top-end porcelain. So, forgive me for not having explained that one yesterday. Um, what else? This was another piece that I showed you yesterday, and it's not here to show you the piece. It's here in response to some questions I've been getting recently about cleaning this stuff. This is my favorite tape sticker goo remover. Um, goo Gone, as you can see, I get it in large bottles. From this bottle, I will pour it into a smaller bottle to cart around in my cleaning bucket. And they even have Super Goo Gone. This is called Gugon Extreme Remover uh, for heavy-duty jobs. If it's sticky and messy, Gugon will get rid of it. It's non-abrasive, and it has a fantastic citrusy smell. Really nice. Um, and that's what this is out for. Because people have been asking me how I do that. Just like this. This is a piece because this set is just in such fabulous condition. I would not want to scrub it and take a chance on doing it any damage. Um, this was from Goodwill, and Goodwill tapes the daylights out of everything. So I've got tape sticky stuff all over this. All gone. Um, this, this stuff was actually um, really hard to pick up and deal with because of the tape crud on it. But as I say, this takes care of it. You know, gone. Excellent. All right. If you buy at thrift stores, Goo Gone absolutely must be in your arsenal. Um, and there are a few things that I would suggest you hang on to in terms of cleaning. Goo Gone is one. Dawn dishwashing liquid is another. Dawn will cut through grease like you wouldn't believe. Um, I use Dawn for all kinds of things other than dishes. Uh, you spill spaghetti sauce down the front of your blouse, and I'm notorious for that. Uh, when Joss and I go out to lunch, we have to allot an extra five minutes for me to go into the ladies' room and wash the soy sauce off my clothes. Yes, I'm just such a slob. Um, Dawn will take greasy stains out of your clothing. Just drop it on the stain, squish it up a little, let it sit, throw it in, just use it as a pre-wash. Dawn is a favorite. Barkeeper's friend, use with caution. Highly, highly abrasive cleanser. And as we discussed in a previous video, this will get that haze crud off Pyrex that's gone through the dishwasher. And that's a major problem. Pyrex that goes through the dishwasher gets this, um, it's a haze. It's really like a white gray film all over it this will get rid of it and that was another one of our little experiment projects 
That was something that I did on a couple of pieces Joss had picked up that were in such bad shape. I figured it couldn't do any harm. Let's see if it actually works. It did. Surprise, surprise. Those pieces came out beautifully. Check back on the video. Um, this. This came from Goodwill. Tape all over it. Uh, just... Ew. I'm not even sure where the end of this tape is. Let's see. Um, yeah, half the battle, frankly, with a lot of this stuff is just getting the tape off. Yeah. And now the tape is sticking all over me. Oh yeah, you can feel it all over. Um, but this is a very pretty little uh, French Chinese piece. The markings here are French. Um, uh, Blanc Rose de Chine, White Rose of China, basically that's all it says. Given where we are located, it's safe to assume this piece made its way here via Canada and not from France. But a piece like this, you wouldn't want to have to scrub it. It's got these nice Capodimonte style flowers and I'm not even sure how you would scrub it. Um, Gugon will take that off. Cleaning tools. My favorites. Um, I don't actually use regular, I have an electric toothbrush, so I don't actually use these. But I go out to the dollar store or wherever every few months and get a package of toothbrushes. They are terrific. They are soft and gentle. And as you can see from this one, which is not only messy, but there's just crud residue down at the bottom. This one's going to have to be thrown out. These are excellent cleaners. You want to get in and clean in here, this will do it for you. Here's another one, a little bigger than a toothbrush. As you can see, this is a very ratty old nail brush. When I have used nail brushes to the point where I just don't think they're worth keeping anymore, they come out of the bathroom and go under the kitchen sink, and that's what I use to do that sort of scrubbing. Now, we had questions about this, which is why we're doing this. I wanted to show you this. This is gilded glass, and uh, I, you'll see uh, metallic edging, metallic paint on a lot of glassware. Dorothy Thorpe glasses come to mind. This is the bane of my existence. I always have a terrible time cleaning these things. And I have come to the conclusion when you're cleaning pieces like this that less is more. Soak them in warm, soapy water, wipe them out, rinse them off, and don't do anything beyond that. I have ruined pieces. It's embarrassing to admit it. I have ruined pieces by trying to buff up the edges. Um, no. Warm soapy water, dry them off, let it go. Because if you try to put a metal cleaner, a gold or silver, even fine jewelry polish, you can make a revolting mess of these things. So, as I've always said, learn from my mistakes. Let me screw it up so you don't have to. This is one of them. This is going into warm, soapy water. I'm just going to let it soak, you know, wash it out a little, a little, rinse it off, and then it's going to be good to go. Do not over fuss on these pieces. It's very easy to pull that gilding right off the piece. And this one is it's in very good condition. The gilding is almost perfect. So I do not want to clean the gilding off. So as I say, less is more on these items. 
Um, what else do we want to talk about? Ah, okay. Starbucks. Uh, over on the crazy lamp lady side, um, I would say at least once a month, we probably get a comment from someone who says, why don't you use reusable Starbucks mugs? This one happens to be reusable. This is my Red Sox mug. Um, here's why. My township recycles and it gets money for the recycling. So anything I put in my recycle bin throws dollars into the pocket of my township. And they take that money and then they can use it for things that that otherwise in the township budget might be considered luxuries and might sort of sift to the bottom of the priority pile. That would be things like um, the Parks and Recreations Department. So when I use Paper Cup, Joss too, she brings hers over here and recycles them in my bin. When we are using Paper Starbucks mugs, we are buying swing sets for little children. We are buying dog walking paths for dog owners. And I have walked my dog on the township dog walking paths. So, no, we're not contributing to mess. We are, in fact, contributing to the township because it all gets recyc recycled and the money goes to a very worthy cause. So, that's why we are using the paper cups. Now, let me just take a look at this and see how we're doing on our time. And we are getting pretty close here. And one of my other cleaning aids, toothpicks. Let's just come over here and... Oh, holy guacamole, Batman. This is not a wasted afternoon after all. This is working. Yep. All right. Let's take a break for a minute because I'm going to need to put on gloves. I don't want to handle that with my bare hands. And see. Yes, I know. I. I there we go. Timer went off. Put on gloves. Remember, using gloves, get out your powder. It makes it much, much easier to put on your gloves and then remove them. So I'm going to leave you for a second. I'm going to put my gloves on and I'm going to wash some of this mess off. And we'll be right back to see what it looks like. Well, I'm back. You want to see? Before, after. Now it needs a little more work. I mean, I'm going to have to get the rest of the paint off. But let's just take a look at that beautiful design. And it's signed. So, yes, oven cleaner will take paint off porcelain. Looks like we learned something new today. And... You know what I'm seeing in our near future? I'm seeing a lamp project and a giveaway. This is just gorgeous. Okay. Next week on Sunday, I think we're going to make a base for this because it needs one. And as you can see, it's an odd sort of elongated diamond shape base so I'm not going to be able to use any of my present collection of lamp bases where I need to get something new for this and we're going to turn this into a lamp and then we're going to give it away all right thanks so much for being with me today Stay tuned next week for the rest of our project.